Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this very interesting theorem. So here we have two matrix spaces, x d and y d dash. F is a function from x to y. We have to prove that function f is continuous on capital X if and only if this condition holds. So here we have if and only if statement. That means we have to assume first part. We have to prove second, and then we have to assume second part, and we have to prove first. Okay. So let us assume one part first. Let me write. Assume that. So we are assuming that f from x to y is continuous function. Okay. So it is continuous on x. And what we have to prove? Let me write here to prove that f inverse b bar subset of f inverse b bar, and this is true for all subset b of y. So let me draw the diagram so the picture will be clear to us. So here we have two matrix spaces, right? So this is matrix space X D, and this is matrix space Y D dash. Okay. What we do? We take one subset B of Y, and for this subset B, we have to prove this relation. Okay. So let us take one arbitrary subset B of Y. So let B subset of Y. I have taken any arbitrary subset B of Y, and we have to prove this relation. See, actually, I am going to use one result here. Okay, so that result we have already proved in previous video. Okay, so let me mention the result so we will get an idea how to prove. So f from x to y is continuous if and only if f of a bar subset of f of a whole bar, and this is true for all subset a of x. So this result we have already proved in our previous video. So this result I am going to use to prove this one, right? So function f is continuous if and only if this relation holds. But this time we take set A, which is subset of X. Actually, we take set A from which is subset of X. Right now we have a subset of Y. We have a need of subset of X. Then only we can use that result. And what we have, we have a subset of Y. So what will I do? I'm going to take its inverse image. Getting so we have a function. No, I should show here. We have a function f from x to y. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to take its inverse image. So its inverse image will be here. So f inverse of b. So its inverse image will be this way. F inverse. Getting f inverse b. So let us take its inverse image. So implies. F inverse B, which is subset of X. So now we got one subset of X. Getting? We got one subset of X. Actually, we were in search of subset of X. So if you have any subset of X, you can use this result. So let us use this result. So therefore, therefore, or uh, see, or I should mention the result. But we know that we know that. F is, uh, I should mention, f from x to y, x from x to y is continuous implies f of a bar subset of f of a whole bar for all a subset of x. Getting? So this result actually there is if and only statement, but we are using just one part only. So that's why I simply mention implies. So if you have any subset of a, subset of x, and f is continuous, then this relation holds. So here we have f is continuous, and we have a subset of x. So the same thing we can write for f inverse b. So f inverse b is our set a. Okay. So let us use this result. Let me remove this part so we can write the next part. Okay. See what will happen now. So we have this result for subset of x, and we have a subset of x. So therefore. Therefore, therefore, what can we write? Therefore, see at a place of a, I'm going to put f inverse of b. So therefore, f of f inverse of b bar, right? At a place of a, I have simply put it f inverse b subset of subset of f of our a is f inverse of b. So f inverse of b. Whole bar, right? Whole bar. 
So what will happen that f and f inverse will get cancelled to each other. So therefore f of f inverse of b bar subset of f f inverse will get cancelled and we will get b bar. Get it? Now I am going to shift f on that side. So therefore f inverse of b whole bar subset of f inverse of b bar. Get it? Yes, we proved what we want. Getting we proved that thing and see b is any arbitrary subset of y. So that's why this uh, statement is true for any subset b of y. So let me mention this is true for every b which is subset of y. So in this way, we prove the half part of this theorem. So now we have to uh, prove the second half. That means we will assume this thing is true and we are going to prove the function if it's continuous on x. Okay, make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. So now conversely, we are assuming second half. That means f inverse of b whole bar subset of f inverse of b bar and it is true for every subset b of y. What we have to prove now? f is continuous on x. So the same result I am going to use which uh, I had already mentioned there. So let us recall the statement of that theorem. Uh, that theorem is f from x to y is continuous if and only if f of a bar subset of f of a whole bar and this is true for any subset a of x. Get it? So if and only if is there. That means if the function is continuous, you will have this condition. And if the, this condition holds, then we say the function is continuous. See, when we have a result with if and only if condition, you can treat it as a definition. So you can say when we say the function is continuous, this can be the definition of f. Getting? What we have to prove the function is continuous, that means it is enough to prove this condition holds. Let me mention here. So therefore, it is enough to prove that f of a bar subset of f of a whole bar and this is true for every subset a of x. Getting? So because of that result which we have already proved in previous video, we could write it. So let me remove that part. Okay. So now our target is to prove this condition. Getting the point? Actually, our uh, uh, target is to prove function is continuous, but because of that result, now our target is to prove this one. So let us take any a subset of x. So let a subset of x. So let me show in this diagram. So we have a, which is subset of x. Getting? So uh, we have some. Uh, assumption getting f inverse of b bar subset of f inverse of b bar. So we have to use this information to prove this one getting. But see this information will be used only for subset of y. That means we are in the need of subset of y. Right now we have a subset of x but we want a subset of y. So what will I do? I am going to take its image in y. So its image will be here image of a will be here we call it as f of a so this is image of a so let me mention here a subset of x that means f of a subset of y and finally we got one subset of y this thing is true for any subset of y and we got it so that means our b is nothing but f of a so let us put b is equal to f of a here so uh, what can we write therefore by our assumption. So let me write by our assumption. What can we write by our assumption? Let me write here by our assumption f inverse of b. b is nothing but f of a. So I should write f of a whole bar, right? Subset of f inverse of b bar. That means f of a bar. So f of a bar. See what will happen f and f inverse will get cancelled so we will have a bar subset of f inverse of f of a bar. So let us shift f on this side so f of a bar subset of f of a whole bar and we proved getting so we proved that thing 
so therefore we can declare f is continuous on x i should mention this is true for any subset a of x so therefore by previous result we can say f is continuous on x so in this way we prove the converse part also so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you